Okay. Now, these are the antennas. Two antennas. We're going to turn these into a, into a Yagi array, a stacked array. They will be horizontally polarized. And let me get this thing out. Slide it over. There it is. Now I can just slide this right over that and it'll fit. So we're set with that. Now, step two, this is the actual radio. Uh, this one, yeah. uh, what we have here, this is a router uh, with a, can you zoom? It right. to be the Doodle Labs. The Doodle Labs 435-30, it is a 420 megahertz radio. The interface is 802.11, uh, but the radio talks at 420 megahertz. And I have it set at 5 megahertz bandwidth to stay within the, the uh, 6 megahertz ATV. And what power? What power? Oh, okay. I'll get to that. Oh. So the question is, what is, what, what is the power? So this is 5 megahertz. The power this thing produces a half a watt. So a half a watt spread over 5 megahertz is not a whole lot of power. So to reduce losses, you really want to basically install, uh, take the radio and install it right at the antenna feed point. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. Now. Even with such a low power, you're going to be able to transmit 57 miles. That's the test. Well, that's the, that's the test. We've, success, we've succeeded with 13 miles across Shenandoah Valley. I did some calculations with two antennas. We, we, uh, 13 miles, we only ran one antenna. Here we're going to use two antennas. It gives us another 3 dB, but two antennas times both ends is 6 dB, 5 dB, 6 dB. Anyway, this slides right over it. And this is friction fit. And again, this slides right over this. Okay, now we have a mark here. Let me turn it around. Where's the mark? Yeah, there, there it is. You see the marks? So you want to put these U-bolts right be between, well, the two sets of lines. So, and then you kind of hold it. The, the specification calls for 34 inches, but if you're a little bit off, it's not going to matter. I mean, 34 inches between? Between the two antennas. Thank you. So you start to so tighten it. Now you have to tighten it so that it doesn't slip down, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to get so tight that it deforms it. This is aluminum. Because remember, this is not going to stay up on top of a mountain uh, for more than an hour. We do our test and we leave. If you have a permanent site, that's a different story. Then you have to weatherproof it and make sure that it's hurricane proof. Or hurricane resistant anyway. Okay. There. And then, our trusty friend down here, same thing. And we're gonna have to make some adjustments. So, now, what, these two have to be parallel. So you, you tighten it so that it doesn't slip down. There. But not too tight that you can't rotate it. So you eyeball it. Oh, okay, I can see. I mean, it, it's really, I mean, it doesn't have to be accurate within a half a degree. It doesn't make a difference because these things have a, a 30, oh, it's my goodness. These things have a 30 degree uh, beam width. But it has to be, the, these two have to line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball. Let me straighten this out. Um, this is a power splitter and power combiner. And this has been three, well, attached over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach it. Oh, it's upside down, but it's okay. Typically, I have this on top. It doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as they're both the same. So this this is the feed point. Notice it's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. Or if it's on top, it has to be on top. If you do it opposite, mirror image, you're going to cancel each other out. The idea is you want to have two antennas to eight to eight each other, not one being upside down with the other. So I'm going to just attach this first. Now it's a little tricky here. This is N 
an end male and you really have to get it in exactly perpendicular to the connector and you have to screw it in and you have to watch it go in straight. If it goes in crooked and you force it, you cross thread it and you basically wreck it. So that's the only tricky part. Also, when you do tighten it, you have to be tight. You can't afford to lose any power. We're running with a half watt here. Okay. Now, over here we have an end connector for the radio. Now last but not least, we need to attach this. That looks pretty straight. Okay. So now, can't forget this. This is Ethernet and power. That's, that's, a, that's a very nice arrangement. So I got a yellow cable, or orange. Hi. This is just Cat5 coupler at each end. We have a, what is it, 17 ampere hour? 18 ampere hour battery, uh, 12 volts, and that's going to power a little power inverter. I looked for the, for the least, not the least expensive, but the smallest power inverter. So I'm going to make my own 120 volts. It does two things. It powers a power over Ethernet device. Oh, where is it? Sorry for the tangle. Here it is. This is a, the router uses 48 volts, not 12 volts, not even 24 volts. How do you get 48 volts? Well, you know, figure out a kludge. So the kludge is to make a, so convert 12 volts to 120 volts and then back down to 48 volts. Heck, it works. And it's low power. I, I measured it, it's about 150 milliamps or 300 milliamps, very low power, these things. The other thing this powers, which is a bonus, is I power my laptop. So what we have here, this is a typical Wi-Fi 208, no, 802.11, let me repeat that, 802.11 client access point configuration. The easiest way to understand all this is imagine Wi-Fi running at 420 megahertz, and then you have it figured out. So the way these ra little radios work, they literally have they use the Athros chipset from Qualcomm, which runs, of course, at 2.4 gigahertz. And then they have something called, a, well, what I call a down transverter. Usually transverters to increase in frequency. And the reason why I call it a transverter, because it's for transmit down to 420 megahertz and transmit and, and receive up to, to 2.4 gigahertz. Okay. Um, okay, so we've got one set up, so everybody knows. Ready to go. How, and so the other one's going to be set up just like this one. Right. Now, the actual test software, I have two things running. Oh, but since this is ATV, what am I running? This is a piece of software called YoCam. Yet another webcam program, YoCam. It's free. And the nice thing about that, it also has a built-in streaming web server. Bingo, we're doing ATV. And then at the bottom of each uh, of the page, I put a, my, uh, a bug, uh, my call sign, W2LNX. So I'm always uh, identifying myself. And one of the action items is to add a audio application uh, to it. Um, the other thing which I have running is something called HFS, uh, Hyper HTTP um, File Server. No, not HFS, that's right, File Server. It's a free piece of software that does only one thing. It is a file server for serving files, period. So, if you, so you, when you download a file, um, you can get an idea of how, what, you, what your bandwidth is, uh, what your bitrate is going. Um, okay, so I guess we can c cut now and I'll, I guess I'll... Uh, well, we're going to have, what are the two places we're going to be at, at in Shenandoah? We plan to be at Hog Back Mountain Overlook, or nearby, about 500 feet uh, south on Skyline Drive, there's a... Uh, there's a, there is a parking lot uh, for the Appalachia Trail, so we'll probably be there. And one of the things we're going to do tomorrow, William and I, is to go out there and uh, just take a look-see, see what mm -hmm. we can see. Um, also, practice getting our bearing. And, and what's the other position that it's going to be? The other position, 
that's an easy one. That's, that's called Reddish Knob. That's like the, that's right on the Virginia uh, and West Virginia border, and that's uh, over 4,000 feet tall. It's a mountain, mm -hmm. and they have this the mountain top is smooth with a parking lot. So there's a road that leads to a parking lot and mm -hmm. nothing else. Right, and it's about 57 miles between those two yeah. points. Uh, air miles. Air miles.